Remember the huge housing market bubble burst? You know, when housing prices peaked in 2006 and then hit bottom in 2012? So what makes prices go up and down like that? You could simply answer supply and demand and sound like you know what you're talking about. But what does that really mean? According to economic theory, when housing prices go up, quantity demanded goes down because less people are willing and able to buy. And when housing prices go down, quantity demanded goes up. This relationship between price and demand is called the demand curve. Also, when housing prices go up, quantity supplied goes up because manufacturers can make a bigger profit. And when house prices go down, quantity supplied goes down. This relationship between price and supply is called the supply curve. Now let's look at what happens when we put demand and supply together. When there's more houses for sale than there are people who want to buy, prices tend to go down. And when there are more people who want to buy than there are houses for sale, prices tend to go up. The greater the difference between the two, the more pressure there is for prices to go up or down. And when supply and demand match up, the market is in equilibrium. But real life is more complicated than that, and economic theory is theory. Because price and demand for houses can both go up, and because housing supply can go down while housing prices go up. That's because there are other things than price that can change. Other things like people's income and lumber supply. As people's income go up, they are willing and able to buy, so more houses are demanded at all price levels resulting in a higher equilibrium price. And as the supply of lumber goes down, the cost of lumber goes up, which makes the cost associated with building homes go up. So less houses are supplied at all price levels, and again, makes for a higher equilibrium price. So what makes housing prices go up and down? Well, supply and demand, of course, and a lot of other things like people's income, lumber supply, availability of home loans, location, location, location. Yeah, you get the picture. Now that you have a basic understanding of the theory of supply and demand, try using it to answer life's other important questions. Like, why is ramen so cheap?